I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk today about systems of inequalities, primarily the uh, linear systems of inequalities, or systems of linear inequalities, whatever your choice is. Well, first of all, let's talk about the definition, obviously. We have to define what we are dealing with. So, what is a system of linear inequalities? Well, that's basically two or more um, greater or equal or less than or less than or equal conditions on certain number of um, linear functions, uh, which depend on the same set of arguments. So let's say you have a set of arguments. It can be one argument, it can be two arguments, it can be 25 arguments. And you have a certain number of linear functions of these arguments. Like function of one argument is basically something like ax plus b. Function of two arguments, I'm talking about linear functions, is something like this, etc. So you have certain number of arguments and you have a certain number of linear functions. And now we are conditioning uh, the values of these linear functions. I will always use less than uh, sign, less than zero primarily, uh, because everything else, all other comparisons are basically derivable from here. And I will put zero here because if there is a constant, we can always use the constant on the left using the invariant transformation of the, uh, of, of the uh, inequalities. So my basic linear function of certain number of arguments looks like this. In this case, it's two arguments, x and y, and the linear function looks like the combination, uh, the result of summation of uh, every um, argument multiplied by some multiplier, maybe by zero, doesn't really matter. What's important is that not all of these coefficients at arguments are simultaneously equal to zero. Now, this is not a linear um, function uh, conditioned on whatever the condition is. So we are considering only cases which look like these. And the combination of two or more uh, conditions on linear functions which depend on the same set of arguments is called a system of um, linear inequalities. Um, okay, so that's the definition. Now, examples, well, I just gave you a couple of examples. The first one was a condition on one particular uh, linear function, the second one was another. Both functions are linear, so basically that's the example. Now, what is a solution to a system of um, linear inequality? So let's just again assume that you have certain system, let's say this one. Uh, dx plus e y plus f Less than zero. So let's say this is a system. Now, the system means that x and y are arguments which are participating in two different linear inequalities. So what is a solution to this uh, particular uh, inequality? Well, any pair, let's call it x0 sub 0 and y sub sub 0. So any pair of values of the argument. In this case, I'm using the word pair because I have two arguments. If I have 10 arguments, it would be a, a 10 set. So uh, in this case, it's any pair which, if substituted into these um, uh, linear inequalities, simultaneously uh, transforms them into true statement, then this is called a solution. It's absolutely similar to an equation, if you have. If you have an equation, it doesn't really matter whether it's linear or not linear. What is a solution to this particular equation? This is an argument. If substituted into this function, 
would convert it into identity. Well, in this case, it's a true statement if you will substitute x0 and y0 if this is a solution to these both in this case um, inequalities. They all simultaneously are true. Now, if I have 10 different linear function uh, with 25 different arguments, what is the solution in this case? Well, this, this is a combination of 25 values that the first argument has the first value, the second argument has the second value, etc. And if all these 25 values of, the, of 25 arguments are simultaneously uh, substituted against the, the variables in all these 10 inequalities, and all of them simultaneously are true, then this is a solution. And the last one, which is kind of, again, more of a philosophical thing, what does it mean to solve a system of, let's say, linear inequalities in this particular case? Well, it means to find all the pairs, or triplets, or uh, sets of 25 different values, all of them which are solutions. So to find all solutions for the system is the purpose of solving it. And whatever um, the methodology we will use to solve these equations, basically it's the methodology which is directed towards finding all the different pairs or triplets or whatever uh, values of arguments, each one of them is a solution. Now, how can we find it? Well, that's, that's kind of a thing which we really have to talk about a little bit. Um, you see, the problem with equations is a little simpler, because in uh, solving the equations, you really set up finite solutions. Uh, let's say you have an equation, I don't know, 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, there is a one solution, actually. x is equal to minus 3 over 2, right? If you have uh, a system of, let's say, two different linear equations with two different arguments, you would still have a certain uh, finite number of uh, solutions. Even if it's a polynomial, not just a linear function, it's still finite number of solutions. In case of inequalities, the number of solutions can be actually infinite. And um, um, here are a couple of examples, basically. Right, I don't really need this general format. So I will present you a couple of cases when there are a different number of solutions, maybe infinite, uh, maybe one solution, maybe no solutions at all, etc. But in any case, I think the right now what, what's important is to understand on a couple of uh, examples which I have what exactly I meant about okay, let's say I have this particular system of uh, inequalities. So, it's a system because there are two um, linear functions conditioned on being less than zero. Now, um, there's only one argument. There's nothing wrong with this, by the way. You can have a system of m equations, uh, inequalities with n arguments, and it's fine. No problem about this. So in this particular case, I have two conditions, um, linear conditions, and only one argument. So let's just think about what are these conditions, and we will use quite extensively the graphical representation of these uh, conditions. Since it's a one argument, then the graphical representation of all the um, uh, uh, values of this argument uh, is straight line, where all the, ra uh, all the real numbers can be presented as points, right? Oh, I didn't really mention it before, but we do assume that in like 99.9% .9 of the cases we are talking about real values of the variables. Okay, so all the real values are on straight line. And let's just think about these two equations, inequalities. Now, we can definitely um, uh, simplify them. In, in the first case, we can add 8 to both sides, and I will have 2x 
min uh, less than 8. And we can divide by 2, which is a positive number, which means that the sign, this equation less than, is supposed to be uh, retained. So I will have uh, x less than 4. So this is my uh, resulting inequality from the first equation. Now, the second one, we will add minus 9 to both sides. That's what I will get. Now, we will divide by minus 3, both sides. But now, since minus 3 is uh, a negative number, the sign of the inequality is supposed to be reverted into greater in this particular case. And I did explain why in the lecture about inequalities. So I will have x greater than minus 9 divided by minus 3, which is 3. This is another condition. So from these a little bit more complicated conditions, I have derived two relatively simple conditions. And I would actually like to present it in a graphical form. So if this is my uh, values of x, this is 0. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, etc. So this is my numerical axis. Now, where are all the x, minus, uh, x less than 4 uh, numbers here? Well, they're here. All the numbers to the left of the 4, not including the boundary 4, because it's a strictly less. It's not less or equal. So equal 4 doesn't really fit. But everything to the left from the 4 fits fine. <coughs> now, what is this? Well, it's this. Greater than 3. Again, not including the boundary. Now, you remember I was saying that solution is a value of the variable or variables which simultaneously transforms all the uh, inequalities uh, in the system into a true statement, right? So both x less than 4 and x greater than 3 must be true in order for some value to be a solution. So 3.5 fits both of them. Now these two are completely equivalent to these two, right? So that's why I can check only these two. So 3.5 fits fine. Now, 0 fits less than 4, but it doesn't fit this one. So 0 is not a solution. So a solution is intersection without the borders, without these endpoints, between these two sets, greater than 3 and less than 4. So everything which is from 3 to 4, not including 3 and 4, is a solution. And this is... The, the, the end of this, uh, this is the end of solving this particular system uh, inequalities. We have found a set of all the variables, all the values for the variables, which, if substituted into all uh, inequalities in our system, transform them all into true statements. Now, let me give you an example of another system which has no solution, which also can happen. So uh, it's this one, minus plus minus plus. How about this? Well, again, let's do the manipulation and transform these two uh, inequalities into a well, simpler format. So in this case, I can add minus 8, negative 8 to both sides. Uh, I will get minus 2x less than minus 8. Divide by minus 2. And since it's a negative number, this sign is supposed to be changed to an opposite. And I will have x greater than 4. Now this one, I add 9 to both 
it will be 3x less than 9. Divide by 3, positive, so the sign of inequality is retained, x less than 3. So I have to deal with these two. And again, it's supposed to be simultaneously true. Now, again, let's just draw the line. 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4. So less than 3 are these. Greater than 4 are these numbers. You see, there is no intersection, <clears throat> which means there is no point, there is no number which would satisfy both simultaneously. This simultaneousness is extremely important. So it means that this particular system has no solution. End of story. Okay. Um, so let's talk about a general form of linear inequality of two variables. Now, um, let me finish maybe the previous example. This was example of one variable and two inequalities. Looks simple, right? So the next. Um, is uh, two variables. And again, we can have two or more than two uh, inequalities which uh, combine together certain linear functions of two arguments. Now, why I specifically emphasized one and two, and maybe three in some other lecture um, uh, cases, one, two, and three arguments? Well, because all these can have certain visual representation. If you have one argument, it can be represented on a straight line, on a numerical axis. If you have two arguments, it can be represented as a point. Every pair of two arguments can be representing a point on the coordinate plane. And any three variables, analogously, um, can actually represent a point in a three-dimensional space. Now, we don't go any further than that, because it's kind of difficult to imagine four-dimensional space. Um, so we will concentrate on one, two, and three. And two actually would be probably more, um, uh, well, familiar maybe, uh, because it's easier to present it on, 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 on a board. Well, 3D is also fine, but two-dimensional two, two problems are a little bit kind of easier to, to, to view. All right, so let's talk about two-dimensional case when I have only two variables. And this is a general expression of a linear function uh, of two arguments uh, conditioned on, let's say, less than 0. Now, similarly to whatever I did in a one-dimensional case, if you remember, I just solved this one-dimensional case and basically cut my numerical line in two, left and right. Whatever was on the left or was on the right, doesn't really matter, was good, which would satisfy one particular uh, inequality. And whatever was on the other side did not satisfy it. So I basically solved each inequality graphically uh, by itself, and then took intersection of areas. So if I had one-dimensional case, I had something which was there, something which was there, and then I said, OK, this is intersection, and that's the solutions. So it's easy to present it graphically. Now, in case of one dimension, I also could do it algebraically, which looks fine, basically. In case of two dimensions, it's not really easy to express, because you have basically two variables, and they are interrelated. So it's not easy to express algebraically. But it's very easy to express graphically the solution to, to, to system of um, linear inequalities of two arguments. And here is how. Again, we will follow exactly the same strategy. If you have more than one linear inequality, let's just find out graphically where are solutions of each one of them and then do an intersection between these areas. 
So what is the solution to, let's say, this particular inequality? Here is an interesting thing. If you have an equality, equals to zero. What is a locus of points on the coordinate plane, um, the coordinates of which satisfy this particular equation? Well, everybody knows this is a general concept of a uh, straight line on the coordinate, pl uh, on the coordinate plane. Uh, I'm sorry, I made a little mistake here. I made I meant why. Well, to get it into more familiar form, um, if non a uh, uh, no, no coefficient at the variable is equal to zero, so a is not equal to zero and b is equal to zero, you can always transform this uh, into y is equal to m x plus n. Right? That's easy, especially if b is not equal to zero. Now. If b is equal to 0, you have something like, basically, well, ax plus c is equal to 0, or x is equal minus c over a. a is not equal to 0 if b is equal to 0, because if both are equal, then it's not a linear function. So one of them is not equal to 0. So if b not equal to 0, it's y is equal to some function of x, which you know is a, a linear function, a straight line. And uh, if b is equal to 0, it's this one. What is this? It's a vertical line. Which goes through this point. So all axes on this particular line have x coordinate. I mean, all points on this line have x coordinate equal to this. And y is not restricted at all, because this is equal to 0, right? So. Anyway, whatever A and B are, this is a straight line. So I'm kind of assuming that this, is <coughs> this issue is closed. It's a straight line somehow positioned on the coordinate plane. Maybe it's a vertical line. Maybe it's a horizontal line. Maybe it's some kind of a line at the angle. But anyway, the locus of all the points on the coordinate plane, which satisfies this equation, is a straight line, one straight line. That's very important, which means that outside of this straight line, this is not equal to zero. Is this logical? Quite logical. It can be less than zero, or it can be greater than zero. Now, another important point. This function, ax plus by plus c, is smooth in the sense that if arguments are changing very slightly, the function value is changing very slightly. So, if I have two points on one, at one point on the plane, the function is positive. And on another, at another point on the plane, the function is negative. Now, what if I'm moving from this to this. Doesn't really matter whether it's a straight line or some curve, doesn't really matter. I'm changing very smoothly my arguments x and y from this point to this point. So my function should change smoothly from some positive value to some negative value, which means that somewhere along the line it must cross the point where the function is equal to zero, right? If I'm moving from a positive area to a negative area, and my movement is smooth, then somewhere I have to cross the value zero. So there is some point in between there where the function is uh, equal to zero. What does it mean actually in our case? Well, here it is. What if my graph of the function ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 is this straight line. What I'm actually stating right now is that all the positive values of this function ax plus by should be on one side, let's say this one, and all negative should be on another side. Because if positive and negative exist on one side of this line, then I can always go from here to here and I can find point where my function is equal to zero. 
But that's not possible because all the zero points of this function are in this straight line, right? So I cannot have on one side of the plane both positive and negative values of this function because otherwise I would have more zero points and all zero points are on this line. So my entire half of the plane, one half of the plane should be positive and another half of the plane should be negative. Then, then obviously, when I'm moving from, from this to this, and I'm intersecting my line, that's where it's equal to zero. That's no problem. But if I have on both sides positive and negative, this is not possible, because then there would exist a point where my function is equal to zero, and it does not belong to the straight line, which we have agreed is not the case. So all the zero points are here. So my conclusion is, that this particular straight line divides an entire plane into two areas, one where this linear function is positive and another negative. If we are interested in negative, let's say, we just have to choose which half to take. How can we choose it? Well, we can just take any point and check what's the value. If the value is positive, it means it's not our uh, half of the plane. We'll just go to another half of the plane. If it's negative, then it satisfies the equation. Then this is the half of the plane which we need. So this is an inequality which has a solution represented as half of the coordinate plane. And the, uh, the edge of this half is the graph of this particular function. All right? Now, how can we graph this function? Well, there are many ways, quite frankly. Um, let's just assume that, um, let's say, I have a few cases. Yeah, I have a few cases. If a is equal to 0, then my function actually is by plus c is equal to 0 or y is equal to minus c over b, which is a horizontal line which goes through point minus c over b on the y-axis. So it's set of all the points on this horizontal line. So the graph of the function in this case is horizontal line which is crossing the y-axis at point y is equal to minus c over b. Now, if b is equal to 0, then I have an equation ax plus c is equal to 0, x is equal to minus c over a, and again, if this is my coordinate plane, let's say my x is, let's say it's here, minus c over a, then it's a vertical line which goes through this point, this line represents the graph of the function in this case. So it's either, so if a is equal to 0, it's a horizontal line. If b is equal to 0, it's a vertical line. But in any case, we know how to construct it. Now, finally, not finally, um, what if a is not equal to 0 and b is not equal to 0? Now we have a choice of c, all right? So what if c also not equal to 0, then what can we say? Well, um, again, there are many ways to, to, to construct this particular line, but I might suggest something like the following. Substitute x is equal to 0, and you will get uh, y equals to minus c over b. So this is one point. Because this is a solution to this uh, equality, right? 0 means this is 0. Minus c over b, it would be minus c plus c is equal to 0. Now we can substitute 0 into y, and you can get the value of x, which is minus c over a. So this is another point. Now where are these points? OK, x is equal to 0 is here and y is equal minus c over b, it's here. Now, 
Another point is y is equal to 0 and x is equal, so it's something like here, for instance. This is minus c over a, this is minus c over b. So we have two points, so the straight line goes through them, right? To build a line, we need two points. So this is one of the ways to do it. There are, any, there are others as well. Now, so we know how to construct this particular case. And finally, how to construct the case when a is not equal to 0, b is not equal to 0, but c is equal to 0, then what this is actually, it's uh, ax plus by equals 0, y is equal to minus a over bx, correct? So again, you know what this is. This is a straight line which goes through the beginning of the coordinate and minus a over b, it's some kind of an angle, depending on what you want. For instance, you can put 1 as x and minus a over b as y, and you will get another point. So 0, 0 is one point, and 1 and minus a over b is another point. So you have these two points, and you have straight line. So we know how to build the graph. OK, so first what we do to solve this inequality on the top, we construct this particular graph. Fine, we have constructed it. Now, after we have constructed it, we have to choose which half the plane we really are interested in. And again, I could suggest basically just take any point outside of the graph itself. Um, for instance, if c is not equal to 0, then you can easily put 0, 0 as, as coordinate and, and, and see where what's the value of this particular um, uh, linear function is. In this case, it would be c. So if c is, let's say, positive, then 0, 0 lies where this um, linear function is positive. If c is negative, then 0, 0 point uh, is uh, belongs to basically the, the solution of this particular uh, inequality. All right, so we know how to solve one particular inequality. It's half the plane which we can construct using graphic uh, of this particular linear function. Now, what if I have two inequalities like this? Well, let's just think about it. You were talking about that you have one half of the plane which represents solution to one inequality. Now, if you have another inequality, and this is another line which represents the equal sign, let's say it's dx plus ef plus uh, e y plus f, then you might have, let's say, uh, this particular half of the plane. which represents solution to the second one. So what is the solution to a system of two equations, inequalities, sorry, in this particular case? That's the intersection. It's this area, right? It should be below this line and below this line. So it's this sector which has a vertex where lines intersect. Now, and where are the intersects, the lines? Well, that's where all linear functions which are represented are equal to zero, right? If you have two, then you have a two uh, uh, lines, and they might intersect. Well, is it always like this? Is it always this type of a sector um, uh, shape, which is a solution to two linear inequalities? Well, not necessarily, because you might have a different picture. Look at this, for example. If you have one line like this and another line like this, so you have these, and you have these. Now, these are below this line, and they represent solution to one particular uh, um, linear inequality. Everything above this line, these, are solutions to a second one. Now, intersect 
these two areas and you will have this area in between two parallel lines right and finally what if intersection is empty is it possible yes absolutely if lines are parallel then intersection can be empty because for one particular inequality you can have this area and for another you can have that area and they have no intersection so then you have nothing so now I think we are um, ready to basically have a couple of examples and here is my first example of system of two uh, inequalities, linear inequalities. And I will write them in this way. Now, is this a system of two linear inequalities? Well, it looks like a solution, right? Well, in a way, this is a system, because this is a linear function of two arguments, x and y, and the coordinates, the coefficient at x is 1, coefficient at y is 0, and the free coefficient c in my formula, ax plus by plus c. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to 0, right? So it's a linear function. Same as this one. In this case, a is 0, b is 1, and c is 0. So these are two linear inequalities in their own rights. So let's try to solve them graphically. Okay, so Let's take the first one. First, we have to resolve x is equal to 0 and graph it. Now, what is x is equal to 0? Well, this is x, this is y, 0. x is equal to 0 is a vertical line which goes through the beginning of the coordinates vertically. This is x is equal to 0. Now, where exactly is the area which we are interested in? Well, we have to choose left or right half of the plane from this vertical line. Well, let's take, for instance, to the left. Let's put um, this point, for instance, which is, let's say, minus 5, 0. Let's substitute it into in, in our uh, inequality. Is it true? X is equal to minus 5. Y is equal to 0, so it doesn't depend on Y anyway. So we have minus 5, which is less than 0, which is true. So everything to the left is our area, which we really are interested in. Now, next one. Next one is, let's first draw the, the graph of Y is equal to 0. Well, y is equal to 0 is a straight line which goes through a given coordinate and along the x-axis, right? This is the line. So all points on this line have coordinate y is equal to 0 and x is not restricted. So which area do we need right now? Which half of the plane? To the up or to, uh, uh, going to the top of this or going to the bottom of this? Well, let's just again take any point. Let's say we'll point this one. Let's say it's 1, 1. Substitute 1, 1 here. x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So it depends only on y, so 1 less than 0, it's false, right? Which means that this is above the line is not the area we are interested. We are interested in the, um, the one which is uh, below this particular horizontal line. So these are uh, values which we are interested in. Finally, where is intersection of these two areas? One is to the left of this line, and another is down from this one. Well, intersection is obviously where I have uh, both red and, uh, and, and brown, which is this one. Again, second. It's a quadrant, uh, quadrant of the um, coordinate plane, uh, it's usually called the third one. The first, the second, the third, the first. It's the third quadrant of the coordinate plane. This second. All the x-y pairs, which are here, 
satisfy the system of these equations. That's the clean solution in this very, very simple case, which obviously you can derive without graphing anything at all. So, now we can do a little bit more complicated case. All right, the last one. Minus 2x minus 3y plus 6 less than 0 and 5x minus 3y plus 15 less than 0. So, again, let's do it according to the book. First, we draw the graph of minus 2x minus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0, and then we will find which half of the plane fits our less than condition. All right. So, minus 2x plus, oh, sorry, minus. Minus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. How to construct the graph of this? Well, again, let's do the way how I suggested. Not necessarily the best way, but something which is easier for me right now. Let's find where is this particular line uh, crosses the x-axis. Well, it crosses the x-axis where y is equal to 0, right? Let's find x. So if y is equal to 0, what's the value of x? Well, obviously it's 3, right? Minus 2 times 3 would be minus 6, plus 6, 0. So if y is equal to 0, this is 3. If x is equal to 0, then the line uh, intersects my y-axis at point 2, right? So if this is 0, this is 2, it would be minus 6 plus 6, 0. So the line is intersecting my two axes at these points, so this is how it looks. Now, we are interested in less than 0. Now, which part of the plane? This one or this one? Well, let's substitute point zero, 0, that's the easiest. If you substitute 0, 0, you will get 6, which is wrong. 6 less than 0, this is the wrong. This is the false statement. So this is not good for us. In our case, we need this one. So this is the area which we are interested in. And that's the solutions to the first inequality. Now the second one. All right. Uh, let me get the right one. OK, if x is equal to 0, so it's somewhere on the vertical line, y is equal to 2, right? So it's, again, this particular point. If y is equal to 0, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a, it's the first equation. You see something is wrong. Now I, okay. now I'm talking about the second equation, which is, 5x minus 3y plus 15 equals to 0. All right. Again, if x is equal to 0, uh, y is equal to 5. Okay. So it's somewhere here. This is a 5. And if y is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 3. So it's somewhere here. So these are two points. Okay. Now, my question is, this or this half of the plane represents solutions to the second inequality. Uh, again, let's just substitute 0, 0. And what do we have? We have 15 less than 0, which is false, which means, again, our solutions are on this side of the plane. So, what is the total solution? Let me just continue this. 
and continue this. So as you see, the area of the plane where both inequalities are true is here. This sector of the plane. Now, if you want to know where is the vertex of this, well, you can actually find the coordinates of this point because it belongs to both um, lines, which means it's supposed to be a solution to both equations. Well, how can we find the solution? Well, in this particular case, um, the easiest way is just to subtract from one another. So minus 3y and minus 3y will be reduced. So I will have 5 minus negative 2, which is 7x plus 9 equals 0. So x is equal to minus 9 over 7. Now, knowing x, I can substitute it into one of these. Let's say the first one. So I will have minus 2 times 9 over 7. But this is minus and this is minus, so it will be plus. Uh, so it's 18 sevenths, right? So 18 sevenths. Now, minus 3y plus 6 is equal to 0. So y is equal to 8 sevenths plus 6 divided by 3. And what will it be? 7 plus 6, 7 times 6 is 42. It's 60. 60 over 7. And then over 3, it will be 20 over 7. OK. So y is equal to 20 over 7. So this point has coordinates x is minus 9 7, something like here. And y is 20 7. Almost 3, and this is slightly more than 1. That's coordinates of the vertex. And if you're interested, not necessarily you are, I understand. All right, so basically, this completes my uh, explanation about what the linear uh, system of inequalities actually is, and uh, how to solve it in case of one and two um, arguments. Graphically is probably the most uh, important methodology which you would use, and um, I will probably have a few examples as problems, which I will uh, talk about in the next lecture. Uh, to get to, to get into into the details of, of the methodology, and I do recommend you to follow up with these. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget that unisor.com contains notes for this lecture and for other lectures. Uh, it also has exams, so your supervisors or parents can actually control the educational process if they're registered. And uh, good luck. <laughs>